Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Hibbs, and I'm the superintendent of the Marlboro Township Public Schools located in Marlboro, New Jersey. I wanted to create a video that would educate our community about the PARC test that students will have to take in the 2014-2015 school year. PARC stands for the Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Careers. More than 15 million students will take this test in the 2014-2015 school year and I wanted to educate our community about what the test is like and what they can expect for our students. Here's what we know. Starting in third grade, students will take both a performance-based assessment and an end-of-year assessment every year in both mathematics and English language arts literacy. The performance-based assessments will be given approximately 75% of the way through the school year. The end-of-year assessments will be given approximately 90% of the way through the school year. PARC has released sample tests. You can see my arrow, and that's where they are located. Currently, there are sample performance-based assessments for English language arts and sample end-of-year assessments for mathematics. PARC plans to release sample performance-based assessments for mathematics and end-of-year assessments for English language arts in the fall of 2014. In my opinion, it is extremely important not only to prepare our students to succeed on the content of the PARC assessments, that would be the Common Core State Standards, but our students must also understand how to navigate this test. To that end, this video will take you through a sample end of year assessment in mathematics for the seventh grade. I will not go over answers for content, but rather I'm going to show you how to be successful on the test. I'm gonna click on the practice tests and the drop down arrow for mathematics. Notice I have many options here starting with grade three end of year and ending with algebra two end of year. You can view any of these and you have answer keys here as well. I'm gonna click on grade seven end of year. There are two sections with 32 questions. I'm gonna start the test. The first part is non-calculator. There's 15 questions and I'm gonna start the section. Notice first, the folder to the right labeled exhibits. I can click on this anytime throughout my test and notice what pops up. I have an assessment reference sheet. Click the X, it goes away. Click the folder, it comes back anytime that you need it. Please notice also the toolbar located at the top. Your arrows help you navigate either to the previous or to the next. I'm on question one, so if I click question two, notice I have a lit blue arrow to go back. Arrows are a great way to navigate to questions that are near you. I'm going to put an answer in for question one, just any answer, and then I'm gonna click the review button right here, the view test overview. Notice here, as I scroll down, I can see all 15 questions. If I need to navigate to a question quickly, I can hit the review button, click on the, the view button associated with that question, and I go right to question 15. If I'd like to go back to question one, I can click view and I'm back at question one. Much easier than hitting the arrow multiple times. I'm gonna go back to the review and notice, there are three things here that the status column will tell me. It will tell me A, I did not view a problem. That's a problem, especially at the end of a section. It will tell me if I didn't answer a problem also a problem that you could find. And last, it will tell me that I answered the question. So at the end of every section, every student should go through this review and make sure that you've answered every question. If I wanna navigate at any time back to my question, I simply have to click return to question. I'm gonna hit the flag button here. And then I'm gonna go back to review. And notice next to question one, it'll say flagged. This is a great tool. Let's say you're going through this test and you're stumped on a problem and you don't wanna spend any more time on it. Flag it and go back to it at the end. Once you address it, you can go back and you can turn the flag off and notice you've answered it. Back is return to question. Okay, this is going to be your pointer. At any point in time, you can select anything at all virtually in this test and you can highlight it. Notice when you highlight it, you have some options. This is the unhighlighter. The white will turn off anything that you do. And you have the three options of yellow, pink, and blue. I love pink, so I'm gonna highlight it in pink. So if I wanna unhighlight it, 
I simply have to highlight it again and click the unhighlighter. This is a great tool to highlight the important information in any text virtually in this assessment. Select all that apply. Select each statement. Okay, that's the highlighter. The next is going to be a protractor. If I click it, it comes up. Notice these circles that help me manipulate how it would go so you can line it up to measure an angle. Make sure you use it correctly. The next is going to be the centimeter ruler. It works exactly the same way. Okay. The, the last is called the answer eliminator. I love this tool. It only works for multiple choice problems. Multiple choice problems, if you want to eliminate an answer, you simply have to hover over it. And notice when I hover, it's a light red, almost a pink. But if I would click, it turns red. Okay. Now, in order to actually go back to actually click the boxes, I have to click the pointer. The correct answers for number one are A, C, and D. So what I think is important to do for a problem is to A, highlight the important information, for a multiple choice problem, eliminate the answers that are incorrect, and select the ones that are correct. Okay, that's the answer eliminator, good only for multiple choice problems. And that's problem one. Let's navigate to problem two. Okay, now, I'm not gonna go over this answer again. But what I am going to show you is that Park highlights important information. Select all that apply. There are multiple answers here that you would actually have to check and then select. So it could be one, it could be more than one. You need to make that decision. Question three. Notice we have a table and we have a text box. I want you to see what happens as I click in the text box, it actually highlights in blue. And this is question three. Question three, the answer is, okay, that's the answer. Notice that as I type in numbers, an X appears. If I click the X, the box is cleared in case I make a mistake. Watch what happens. I'm going to hit the B key, invalid input. In other words, I need to enter a decimal. If I don't do that, I get an error message. That is a text box. Text boxes, in my opinion, usually have a label here. And if they don't have a label, they'll a lot of times have a dollar sign. But occasionally, you will have no label, and they want a decimal. Question four. Select each correct answer. Now, notice, this is multiple choice. So what could you do here? That's right. For question four, you could use the answer eliminator. And I would eliminate A. I would eliminate C and I would eliminate F. And the correct answers for number four are B, D, and E. Question five, text box. Remember I told you there's a label? There you go, minutes. Question six, this is your first drop down. So notice with a drop down, very simple, you have an arrow, you must drop it down, and you must click. So for question six, the correct answer would be two, and then negative three-fourths. You must have answers in each. Question seven, text box again. Notice that there's going to be a dollar sign as your label. Question eight, text box. I'm not gonna go over it. Question nine, okay. At first glance, this looks like a calculator. It absolutely is not. It's a very big toolbar and you need to know everything about it. So as you hover over something, it will tell you what you need to know. Clear all, undo, redo, backspace, plus sign, minus sign, time sign, division sign, fraction, mixed number, power, square root, equal, approximately equal. Then I have a whole other series of drop downs. I have my numbers. In addition, I have the comma, the decimal point, and the constant pi. If I click it, it will hide and I can go to the next. I have my plus, minus, times, division, plus, minus, negative sign, times dot, division slash, dollar sign, degree sign, percent sign. Click again, it goes away. 
exponents and roots. Power, square root, cubed root. Click and it goes away. Relations, equal, not equal, similar, not similar, less than, greater than, approximately equal, not approximately equal, less than or equal, greater than or equal, congruent, not congruent. Geometry, ray, line, line segment, parallel, perpendicular, angle, angle measure, triangle, parallelogram, circle. Click and it goes away. And then groups, parentheses, bracket, brace, and absolute value. Remember, this is not a calculator for number nine. It's simply a very big toolbar and you need to understand how to manipulate and use all of these for question nine. So for instance, if you needed to enter a fraction, notice the fraction appears, you have a top and a bottom. So if I wanted to put in, let's just say three bits, it's now in. If I wanted to do a mixed number, I could do that as well. If I wanna clear all, it's all gone. I'm not gonna solve this problem for you for content, but I need you to understand how to use every one of these tools on the toolbar. That's question nine. Question 10 is going to be multiple choice. We've gone over this. Highlight the important information and then use your answer eliminator. Question 11, you have two text boxes. We've gone over this. Watch out for the invalid input. Question 12, we have drop downs. I've showed you how to use them. You know how to do it. Question 13, multiple choice. Watch out for your important information. It's your roadmap. All that apply can be more than one. Question 14, same way, all that apply. And question 15, all that apply. Notice how many options you have here. Seven options, choose carefully. Now watch, this is gonna be the end of the section, 15 to 15, so what I would do here is I'd click review and any one that didn't say answered, I would address. Okay, if I click the arrow again, it's gonna take me to continue Okay, it's gonna warn me, and then I'm on the calculator part. The only difference here, notice the toolbar at the top, I have a calculator that I can now use. Okay, grade seven calculator. You must know all the functions and buttons. Okay, this is once again going to be a toolbar. This is also not a calculator. If you wanna use your calculator, just like I showed you, you have it right here for you. Okay, so question one, you would simply have to put in the correct answer, which would be one fourth. Question two, we have two text boxes. Notice your label changes. Park will do that to you a lot. Okay, watch your label. Question three, all right, this is an interesting question because you can see here that you have a multiple choice. So right away you could highlight and use your answer eliminator and as I scroll down, I have a toolbar. So I have two, two parts, part A and part B. But I want you to also pay attention that this is also a slider, okay? So if you look at it on first glance, it looks as if you only have three rows. But as you go down, you have more than three rows. You have six rows, okay? So you must solve all the problem, understand how to manipulate, and then put your answers in. Question four, okay? Roadmap, enter only your fraction. You see that, you know right away you're going right here to fraction. Question five. I haven't showed you this yet, so watch this trick. If you hit the control minus or plus keys, it makes your test appear uh, smaller or bigger. I can keep going smaller. Control plus makes it bigger. I like this because I like to see the whole field of the question. If you'd like to zoom in further, you would simply then have to use the navigation tool at the right, okay? I like it right there. Part A, part B, multiple choice, what could you use? Highlighter, answer eliminator. You got it by now. Question six, okay, you have information, part A text box, part B drop down. So you have one, two, three things to answer here. Question seven, okay? First time I think we're seeing the highlighted word best. 
So for question seven, uh, the answer is B. Best compares is going to be one answer, and the answer is B. Okay. Question eight, once again, you have your toolbar. Okay. You're, it, the answer is a fraction, and it's four fifteenths. Okay. Or the equivalent. Question nine, text boxes. I've gone all over that. Question 10, two text boxes again, label is money. Question 11, okay, I think this is the first type of problem we're seeing like this. So you have to read the information and then you have to know and recognize the important roadmap word, could result. So you must go through and think logically about all of these options. Click the correct options and then you can move on. Okay, question 12. This is as long of a question as I believe you're going to see. I'm gonna zoom out for a second, and you can see here that there is a part A, a part B, a part C, and a part D. So the labels, cups, ounces, quarts, then you have to enter only your fraction. In all of the park sample assessments, I have only found a four part question. I haven't found any more. Whether or not the actual assessments will have more, we don't know. But as of right now, get ready for four parts. I'm gonna zoom back in and I'm gonna move on to question 13. Okay, which statement is true for question 13? The answer is B, but remember, I could use my answer eliminator to make sure that I was covering all of my bases. Question 14, text box, miles, text box, minutes. Question 15, okay, plotting points. Let me make sure there's nothing underneath. I'm gonna zoom out a sec so I can see everything all at once. Okay, so for question 15, uh, they are asking us to actually plot points here and I have to do some, some work to figure out. So the coordinates of point P are three comma two. Well, I want you to notice first that as I click on point P or point Q, the arrow is going to change, and that's going to make that point color become alive. Well, I know what point P is. Point P is 3, 2. I've always been taught you go right, and then you go up, and there is my point P. Now, as I go to point Q, I need to know that there's going to be a proportional relationship. So it's going to be at 9, 6. Right 9, up 6. Okay. Now let's say, for instance, that I would have made a mistake here. And let's say that I would have been on point P and I didn't click on point Q and I went over here and I put it somewhere else. I simply have to go back and click the correct point and then put it back in. Okay. So it's important that you toggle between the two and understand how to do it. That's question 15. Question 16, I'm going to zoom back in. Notice I have two text boxes here, both of which with the same label. You're a pro at this by now. Question 17, okay? Question 17 is gonna be a multiple choice. Which one best predicts? I know it's gonna be B, but I've could've, I could have eliminated A, C, and D, and I could have also highlighted the important information. You know, let's say I thought that it would have been, you know, the digit five, and that would be the answer. Notice now I'm on question 17 to 17, so what should I do? I should review, and anything that was not answered or not viewed, I should go back and address. And that is the end of the section. That is the grade seven sample end of year mathematics assessment. If you are in middle school, I would recommend looking at the grade six and the grade eight as well. And I would even recommend watching all videos because the samples have different types of problems that you're going to need to know how to be successful on. I wish you the best of luck. Take care.